Chicago's Mayor Rahm Emanuel was forced into a runoff in his 2015 bid for re-election. This reduced the number of his opponents to one. Jesus Chuy Garcia. Some said Chuy was a move away from Democratic Party politics. Others said, no he wasn't. Running for aldermen in the wards were several declared non-Democrat candidates. And there was a socialist and a maybe non-democrat. They were all based in the unions. One of them even won. After the election, leftists and labor activists held a national conference in Chicago. One speaker asked for more analysis of the recent Chicago City Hall election. Any left political formation that's going to mean anything in this country is going to have a significant portion of people who have been won over who, from the Democratic Party who are currently there. And so it's a bit of a disappointment uh, to me that this conference didn't spend more time talking about what I think is really an exciting development in this country. That is, what happened in Chicago during the last elections. That's really exciting, not because it represents the future, but because it represents cracks in that party structure and that the main thing that we have to do as leftists is to talk about how we relate to those developments. Now I'm not saying, I, I don't know enough to be able to know enough about all these campaigns and I take people's word for it about what was bad and what was good, but we needed more discussion about that, but more importantly, more discussion about how we relate to the people who are involved in those things so they can draw the conclusions of how what they did was ex exercise of power and what direction they have to take to make that power real. There was some discussion at the conference about how cracks in the Democratic Party began before the election. Chicago is the city of the perfect dictatorship of the Democratic Party. <laughs> Everything good? is due to the Democratic Party. Everything bad is due to the Democratic Party. We can't blame Republicans. There's no way. You know, they don't figure in Chicago City politics. Uh, two years ago at the CORE convention, there was a, a kind of a split within uh, CORE about politics. And I raised a question, and others did too, um, you know, should we continue supporting the Democrats or should we break off and, and you know, chart our own political course? And and you know that that issue wasn't really resolved, you know, because and it was split pretty much 50-50. Um, so at, when the next election cycle came around, that was the opportunity to test this out. My name is uh, Tammy Benson. I'm a, a resident of the 28th Ward, and I also ran for that aldermanic seat in 2015. Uh, the decision to run was based on the lack of resources in my community. It was based on the lack of proper representation by the incumbent, Jason Irving. And it was based on the fact that we've been voting Democratic for so long in the black community that I think our, our needs are being taken for granted. So a number of other teachers decided to run also. And it was a claim from a full discussion about whether or not we needed a third party something that a party to represent the interests of the working class, of the common person. Those, so that didn't happen, as, but I think as a result of the campaign, that eventually one day we'll see that those issues need to be addressed, and if we're not prepared to be a champion of those issues, then we'll keep getting sold out by the Democratic machine. Well, my name's Ed Hershey. I'm a teacher at Lynn Bloom High School and a uh, delegate with the C Chicago Teachers Union. And we're here in the 25th Ward. Uh, I ran for alderman here and was endorsed by the Chicago Teachers Union. Um, and we ran to put forward uh, a working class program that working class needs to fight for its own interests, needs to fight for more jobs, for higher pay, more funding for the public schools, better public services. That there's plenty of money in this city to get all of those things, and we're only going to get them when the working class fights for it. 
And I also ran to say, you know, say that clearly and to say the working class needs its own organization to represent its own interests. That the Democratic Party represents the ruling class in this city. And we had an opportunity to say, you know, no, we need people who are going to represent ourselves. And so that's partly why I ran. As Tim Meegan pointed out, the debate in core about leaving the Democrats ended in a stalemate. And so the teachers' union fell back to the old default settings, which is to stay connected in some way to the Democratic Party. But even in late September of 2014, people were still hoping that teachers' union president Lewis would herself run for mayor and, in some way, break with the Democrats. Karen's sudden illness ended the speculation. And so, Democrat County Commissioner Chewy Garcia became the CTU-endorsed candidate for mayor. But at least a month earlier, on Labor Day, Karen had already decided to stay in the Democratic Party fold. And I have to share with you that on September 1st, Labor Day, I spent it with Karen Lewis at her house for four hours. We sat there devising strategy on how to get her elected mayor of the city of Chicago. It's a good way to spend Labor Day. Reflecting, planning, and planning for a new Chicago. The conversation centered around the critical importance of ending and stopping the corporate agenda in Chicago. And we were inspired by the fact that it was done in a short amount of time in the city of New York when a guy by the name of Bill de Blasio decided to step up and to say right. no more to the agenda of the 1%. It's time for the 99% to take control of their city and stop the corporate agenda. Although Chewy took the teacher's side on some issues, in the debates, he did not rule out cutting teachers' pensions or making the tough decisions. Despite police brutality protests, Chewy wanted to hire 1,000 more cops. He didn't present a real break from the politics of the bosses. He lost to Rahm Emanuel by 12 percentage points. And what happened in the aldermatic races? Here's Deb Mel. You know what, I love my father. I mean, let's just get it out there. You know, he was alderman for 38 years, um, but we're different people. She basically inherited the office of 33rd Ward Alderman from her father, Richard Mill, who is the father-in-law of former governor and incarcerated felon, Rod Blagojevich. The Mel family is solidly linked with the Chicago machine. Tim Meegan, a teacher endorsed by the CTU, challenged incumbent Deb Mel at a well-attended debate before the February election. When asked who he supported for mayor, he said, Chewy. I need to go down the line here and ask very quickly whether or not you want to see Rob Emanuel reelected, and if you do not, which candidate do you support? Tim, sir? Uh, no, I do not, and I support Chewy Garcia for mayor. But here's how the progressive Chewy Garcia rewarded Tim Meegan. In an interview in Second City Teacher, Meegan reported that, we are disappointed that while our team collected signatures and promoted Chewy Garcia for mayor, Chewy's campaign did not endorse or work directly with us. Instead, he appeared at a seniors' Valentine's Day event for Deb Mel, organized by her father. Amid charges of electioneering and mishandling of ballots, Mel was declared the winner by only a 0.17% margin. Chewy did, however, actively support teachers' union activist Sue Garza, appearing at her big 10th Ward campaign rally before the election. The rally was a showcase of progressivism. Here's John Nichols, progressive journalist who writes for The Nation. He says all classes should work together using a rhetorical sleight of hand that equates class differences with racial differences. And I love that we've got people of every 
embrace of every religion, of every class, gathered together on the southeast side of Chicago. Income in America today is going to the top 1%. And what Chewy and Susan are fighting for is an economy that works for all of us and not just the billionaires. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders envisions an economy where the 99% and the billionaires can live together. And he links the Republicans to the billionaire class, but leaves out the Democrats. Budget committee. So I was on the floor last week, all week long. And let me tell you what the billionaire class and their employees, i.e., the Republican Party, have done. Karen Lewis offered some more progressive philosophy. She said that the road forward is just to ask for small concessions and to really talk to the rich people who run the city. We can sit here all of our lives, and guess what? I don't care who the mayor is, the same rich people that still run Chicago, don't think for a minute that's not going to happen. But if you have an opportunity to really talk to them, possibly move them, not miles and kilometers, but, you know, a foot here, an inch there, things will change. Things will change. I've been here for 55 years, and used, there used to be a lot of people just like me. You grew up here. You lived here your whole life. You've raised your family here because the 10th Ward had so much to offer. Where there were jobs, there is now poverty. Where there was a unified 10th Ward, there is now isolation. Where there were safe streets, there are now kids turning to gangs and drugs and despair. But what's even more heartbreaking and why I stand before you today, none of this happened to us by accident. None of it. Especially the movement to divide the 10th Ward and sow confusion and keep us in the dark about what our government is doing. Of all the union-based aldermatic candidates, Garza was the only one who won. Board of Election Commissioners? Yeah. Do you have the numbers, numbers, like for 30? No, it doesn't give it by the It just gives the total. Tonight, we are here to announce that all the precincts are in and all the votes have been counted. We are ahead by 89 undisputable votes. After the election, the issue of independence from the Democratic Party wasn't solved. Chewy, the progressive, Democrat didn't win, and no new political party for workers was created. Were any lessons learned? After the election, speaking before a conference of leftists and socialists, Sue Garza said her position was between Democratic Party and independent. So um, <clears throat> unions played a vital role in my camp in our campaign, and I see myself. Um, that's a really good question. And Bernie Sanders actually came to our ward to endorse me. Um, it was a very exciting time. It was a great rally. Um, I see myself as an independent. Um, you know, I we've been let down by the Democrats and the Republicans, and. Um, you know, I, 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 I've been thinking a lot about that, so I, I, don't, I don't know where I stand right now, but that's where I'm leading, so. The Labor Community Coalition behind Chewy's run for mayor was United Working Families. 
did it still intend to stay connected to Democratic Party politics or form a new political party? And would it really be based on class struggle? The idea of United Working Families was to build um, a sort of a, a democratic organization, one rooted in democratic principles of, you know, of, of grassroots voice and power, of anti-austerity, of anti-privatization, um, and building, poli- you know, independent political power in the city of Chicago. Um, and, you know, I think there are things that we did well, and there are lots of lessons learned and things that we're still figuring out and that we haven't succeeded on still. It's interesting to note that in 2014, Crane's Chicago business felt Amisha Patel was safe enough to promote as an exemplary community organizer. We've been having lots of conversations about the fact that we do need to be a part, you know, like what would it mean to be a party? What would it mean to act like an independent party? So, uh, you know, in Chicago, it's not a third party we need, but a second party, right? Mm-hmm. Since the only party we have is the corporate Democratic Party. We can't blame Republicans. There's no way. You know, they don't figure in Chicago city politics. And that's a very big complication because on one hand, that allows us to say, you know, that the Democratic Party is very bad because there are no Republicans to blame. That's fine. On the other side, it's incredibly difficult to do so. We were demanding a minimum wage tied up to inflation. Well, guess what? The city of Chicago has it. They have it. They approved it last year. We're going to have uh, wage increases all the way to $13 uh, an hour in 2019, by which, of course, is going to be the equivalent of like $9 today. But it is, you know, it's still a wage increase. And then increases every year tied up to inflation. So a very legitimate leftist demand in the 1970s is being approved by the Democratic Party here, just like that. So. How do we and where do we create the exact line? Where do we draw the exact line you know, between the left uh, pushing for the things people want and these uh, you know, parties that, get, uh, that are forced to do things, but then, of course, they get the credit for doing it? I came to the conclusion, and many of us did, that we cannot get the change that we want to see within the constraints of the Democratic Party. And we need to form our own you know, independent political movement. Now, you know, Mr. Mujica right here, uh, who I have tremendous respect for, right, who ran in the 25th Ward as an uh, unabashed socialist, uh, and I commend him for that. Um, my perspective was a little bit different, and I'm sure he's going to speak uh, about his perspective, but you know, from the way I saw it, um, people get hung up on labels a lot, and probably many of you in this room will disagree with me, but it's the issues that matter, right? The bottom line is that the issues that socialists stand for are common sense uh, solutions to the problems that you know, so many of us face. Could a movement for independent working class politics fulfill its potential with just a list of common sense demands? Or should this movement qualitatively evolve into a new political party? At a subsequent forum on the upcoming CTU contract, Tim Meegan listed demands that could create more political fissures with the Democrats. Uh, We need new revenue, but politicians aren't willing to tax the super rich. Well, here are some ideas that we have floated for years now uh, that politicians just seem to repeatedly forget. Uh, TIF money, the $250 million a year that TIF siphons off of our school budgets should be returned every year. Uh, Toxic swaps need to be renegotiated. They cost CPS over $500 million so far and will continue to cost as much as another $500 million in the future. Ron Emanuel said there's something called a contract, but other mu- municipalities, including large cities like Los Angeles, have successfully renegotiated these loans. So far, there's been no attempt here in Chicago to renegotiate these deals. At the state level, we can close tax loopholes. Illinois loses $8.5 billion to offshore tax shelters uh, in just 2014 alone. That's enough to cover the entire state's deficit. 
or equivalent to $1,400 for every taxpayer in the state. The millionaire tax in 2014, the referendum was voted on by uh, Illinois voters. Uh, that would add a 3% income tax to those who pull down a million dollars or more. Uh, Illinois residents voted yes on that by 64%, so long as the money went to education. Yet we see no action there. We need a graduated income tax. If this state implemented a graduated income tax or a fair tax like Oregon does with the top tax bracket being at 9.9%, .9%, that would double our state's revenue. And finally, we need a financial transaction tax. If we tax one cent on every hundred dollars that is uh, traded uh, on public markets, that would amount to 30 or 40 billion dollars every year. And that figure excludes uh, taxing mutual funds, retirement, and pension accounts. Uh, these revenue solutions have been promoted, but politicians haven't taken action. Private corporate ownership has guarded the public sector and turned the government into a dictatorship of the rich. Go home stand. Go home stand. And any political party that protects the private control of industry, finance, and government won't protect the workers. <laughs> Truly, what political party could possibly represent the interests of two classes? at war with each other. This is the Chicago Board of Trade. They the biggest gamblers in the business. And they gambling on our baby's future. They gambling on the fact that they don't even want us in this city. So they shooting us out. They jailing us out. They working us out. They privatizing us out. They trying to get us out by any means necessary. This means war. Say it! 